Jenny, please take it away. Thank you. Thank you for having me and thank you everyone for being here. Um, I'm an associate professor of wildlife biology at Cal State Monterey Bay. Um, and this project it actually was inspired, you, next slide please, by conversations with my campus NatureRx working group, um, primarily focused on P22, the famous mountain lion that um, found its way to a very small park in Los Angeles, much too small for its, its size. Uh, was radio collared and then tracked and drew the attention of the community. All of these people followed the mountain lion and eventually it tried to leave and it did die. Um, and there was just this outpouring of sympathy, sadness about the loss of this mountain lion, but also an outpouring of donations that then sparked the construction of a wildlife uh, corridor across a local freeway in Southern California. So, Pretty inspiring. Oh, try to do the finger wave here. Um, and really got me thinking about these animal ambassadors. So animals that we recognize as individuals, we name them. They're often used in zoos and aquariums for educational purposes, but sometimes like P22, we recognize these animals living in the wild. They may be tagged in some way. Um, and, and they really have these impacts on us that have been studied. You know, they improve educational outcomes if they're large predators or pest species. Um, by having these identified individuals, we can actually increase aversion to the lethal removal of these animals. And then, of course, we can increase conservation support and then, importantly, connectedness to nature. So I was interested in doing that on campus. And um, this is a pretty interesting thing to do on my campus in particular. It's a, it's a strange campus. It used to be a military installation. So just in 1994, it was converted. Huh. Uh, it doesn't have the ivory you know, covered towers that you might see on the nice campuses out east. It's not really sleek and modern and well landscaped. It's just pretty rustic and, and wild. That's what we have is open spaces and lots of wildlife. So I wanted to try using animal ambassadors to connect people to the campus environment and the community. Um, next. And then I wanted to take that even further and create a citizen science project where we study our animal ambassadors and see if that even further connects people to the campus and its community. So this is the general layout of the methods I'm using. Last spring semester with a wildlife management course, we began creating animal ambassadors. So putting colored collars on squirrels. We continued that this semester. Um, now with funding, I'm paying some interns to do this work. And then semester in the spring, we'll begin the citizen science part. So that'll include signs out with ecological uh, information about squirrels and our local ecosystems and QR codes that will take people to a form, probably Google form, where they can enter some basic data on the squirrels that they observe. And then you can see at these different stages throughout, we do surveys of students on campus. And that is looking at um, mainly their attitudes towards these animals and um, the campus itself. How are we creating animal ambassadors um, and live squirrels? The squirrels are diurnal. They're really obvious. They're pretty charismatic. People like them. Um, they're found all over North America, almost every college campus. So you can actually replicate this work. And on my campus, we have the California ground squirrel, which is actually considered a pest. And we have recently invading the eastern gray tree squirrel. So potential for some interesting interactions with a new invading species. So students are doing most of the work here with my assistants. Uh, next. And what we're doing is first putting traps out on campus. Next, you can see they're actually placed very discreetly, covered with lots of leaf litter and stuff like that. So not really um, causing a big fuss on campus. And then when we capture a squirrel, and this is really the students here, they find a squirrel, they text me, I run out there, um, I do most of the handling of the squirrels and the students place the cone of shade 
for the squirrel. You can see the picture here. And then it makes it pretty safe for us to put the collar on the squirrel. Right. And so here are a couple of examples. On the left, that's Violet. She's a ground squirrel with a purple collar. On the right, you have your eastern a tree squirrel. That's Delilah with the pink collar. <laughs> Next, please. Okay. And then the next part, we have our squirrels. We need to make everyone on campus aware of the squirrels. So we have the big outreach campaigns. Using mostly Instagram accounts, that seems to be the social media that our students most connect with. Um, and we create these profiles for the squirrels that we collar. Uh, some names, right? So this one is Kruger, we call it recently. So we're going with kind of a Halloween theme. Um, we do a little bio, we kind of give them a personality, which might be a little bit based on reality, but a lot of not. Um, and then there's a fun fact, so some ecological information about squirrels or other aspects of the native ecosystems. Next. Hmm. And then watching so many squirrels a semester that we're actually doubling up on some of these profiles. So here we have burger and waffles. Uh, they were captured in the same location behind uh, our library. So we've We've got two of them there. Next. And then the part about creating the citizen science project. This could be a little bit uh, more challenging, right? So what are your study questions going to be? For me, it's, I do a lot of behavioral ecology. So collecting information on behavior and forming questions around maybe native species pretty well. I happen to be a founding member of Squirrelnet, which is a research network where we're trying to put field-based research experiences into our courses. So with that group, we already have these uh, protocols for students on these different types of data. So it's easy for me to take that and modify it so that non-science um, could use it. Next. Okay, and then the surveys. We have our students who do the trapping of the squirrels are also um, helping to collect surveys from students on campus. On the right, you can see examples of the pins or the stickers that they hand to people who take the survey. So kind of fun stuff. Um, the surveys ask questions about whether or not the respondent has been exposed to an animal ambassador. Have they heard uh, about them or have they seen them? Um, there are a few questions uh, testing their ecological knowledge and then things about their attitudes towards the squirrels and attitudes towards the campus environment community, and then wrapping up with demography um, and what the student's major is. So last spring, we created 11 animal ambassadors and we've got twice as many so far this semester. Um, I think we've got so many that we'll start focusing our efforts on the out outreach campaign now. Um, and then, of course, do our surveys at the end of the semester. We've had quite a few participate in this, so gain skills in working with wildlife and, and outreach using social media. And uh, we've had a lot of engagement with the campaigns. So this is actually um, an image from one of the Instagram accounts that is not affiliated with our university, but it's love the squirrels on our campus. And so they post lots of pictures of animal ambassadors and you can see you know, lots of likes um, next. In some cases you get comments like this one commenting, basically our squirrel is overweight. So I do plan on posting something there that will be a teachable moment, you know, talking about not feeding our wildlife. Next. And our Campus Nature Rx group does a, um, or story map that we're using as a map of our campus that highlights nature places um, you know, that are supporting all of the benefits we've been talking about today. We've also got the location of at least one of our squirrels on the map, and that's actually our students on campus. That's kind of their favorite part of the map. They love squirrel. Okay, and then surveys. We've had last semester, we had a good response rate had a couple hundred responses um, when you find surveys that went at the beginning and the end of the semester. Here I'm just looking at uh, responses at the end of the semester. Together, it was about a little 
than 40% of the respondents that had um, some kind of awareness of the animal ambassadors. And so in this figure I'm showing here, I'm comparing responses between um, people where they did not have exposure to the animal ambassadors or they did. And you can see, so that top one is um, actually showing that there's a big increase in ecological knowledge, in this case about the burrows of the squirrels being used by other rare animals. Um, they're not just a nuisance. Um, you see an increase in aversion to using rodenticides for management on campus, um, and then increases in agreement with you know, the, the statement that they're attached to their campus that the campus community provides a good place for their student experience, right? So these are, I, I think, fairly small shifts here, but I'm hoping we'll see um, increases in those when we do our surveys this semester. We have so many more squirrels out there. I think we're gonna have a lot more awareness and engagement, and that should continue even more next semester with the Citizen Science Project. So I think this is a really fun way to get people connected with wildlife and nature on their campus, but not necessarily an easy lift. So if you have a wildlife biologist on campus, that's the easiest way to get something like this going. I know uh, other campuses where people banned like sparrows or other small birds. Some people paint little different color splotches on fence lizards. So that does take permitting and it takes some experience. Um, so that means connecting with the right people. If you don't have that available, there are pretty affordable wildlife cameras you could use to you know, capture images of some of the neat animals you have on campus. Web cameras have been used for campuses to follow the growth of um, hatchlings in a net. Uh, and then there's always just the use of social media, just having students submit sightings of a particular animal on campus. That itself could be pretty fun. Setting up the citizen science part also could be challenging. Like I said before, I think collecting location data and behavior is probably the easiest uh, lift there, really. Um, you can keep in mind that there are some things that are already in place that you could build on top of. So for example, iNaturalist, you could easily have students take pictures of particular animals on their campus and submit them to iNaturalist and just know in the comments you know, what behavior they saw of the animal or something like that. And then you can just download that entire data set from iNaturalist. So I, I want to point out, well, thank you to many people and um, especially the College of Science for my university. I received funding from them. This follows something people were talking about earlier today. I, um, in my proposal, for this project did bring up that by connecting people to wildlife and to our, our campus environment and community, that we should be able to increase recruitment to our campus and importantly, retention. And I think that's part of the mm -hmm. reason I received this funding. It's a really important thing to point out. So um, hopefully other people can take advantage of that too. So I do thank you all for being here. And of course, I thank you uh, all these people and squirrels that have been participating in this project. <laughs> Jenny, thank you. Uh, brilliant um, program, as a number of folks in the chat are mentioning. I was going to ask you uh, if the squirrels get to choose their color of color, but uh, more seriously, um, a real issue that I hear about increasingly is eco-anxiety among students, where students feel a sense of hopelessness or helplessness when it comes to climate change and related issues. Have you been able to study or are you anticipating studying how your student ambassadors might have a reduction in eco-anxiety eco as a result of participating in this study? That's a really good question. It's not something I had thought about yet to add into the survey that we'll be doing this semester, but it's something we are increasingly talking about in our particular um, campus nature RX group because we have somebody um, participating from our, our, our health institute on campus and they specialize in 
eco grief therapy. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's a great yes. idea. Yeah. I love the idea of including yeah. some questions related to that. And I see from one of our participants, um, Megan, um, that she is studying just this at NC, uh, North Carolina State. 